the Joe Rogan experience. There he is. The Fonz! Oh, he, he jet skied over the shark? Yeah. Why did I think it was I a motorcycle? This is what it, it, he's popping up. He was skiing in a lake or something. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> Of course he has his jacket on. Oh, the Fonz. <laughs> Got a leather jacket I think on. Yeah, I think it's more unbelievable that he'd wear a leather jacket water skiing than jump over a bunch of sharks. Well, how about he's got it in between his legs? Look at look where he, how he's doing that. Go back to that original picture. Oh, he's holding it to stay like balanced. Wait, no, did go Henry back to the original Winkler picture. actually right learn there, how right to... That one you just had. It's right here, too. Yeah, but that's black and white. That's okay. too artsy. <laughs> right there. Look at he's got it in between his legs. That's the pole. Wait, that looks like he's really doing that, too. I bet he is. Wow. Good you could start do that. work, Henry. Hey! <laughs> I mean, they didn't have CGI back then. He kind of had to do it. Right, yeah. Up until the point where it actually like flew through the air, and then they got some rugged Brad Pitt from yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood type dude. <laughs> I don't know where they're actually Look at that. Was. Is that the shark? No, no, no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's jumped. The, that moment has now jumped the shark as memes and stuff. Yeah. So many like jokes about it. But it's crazy that it was such a bad episode mm -hmm. that it became like symbolic say. of a show going off the rails. Yeah. Show Jump the Shark. Mm. Yeah. I like a good two season show. Mm. Like I love I love a mini series. I love things that end. Do you watch Maisel? No. It's I watched good. a little bit of it. You didn't okay, like it? here's my problem with <gasps> it. I don't think the jokes are funny. Mm. Well, it's contextual. Right? Yeah. I, and I get that, but it's like, I don't know. I just have a hard time. I don't Listen, I've been watching a lot of Lenny Bruce over mm -hmm. the last few months. I, I found this one Lenny Bruce channel on uh, YouTube. It's got all of his old, old clips from various uh, television performances. And they don't make me laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he's the best. I mean, he's, he, right. I mean, I don't want to say he's the best, but he's the godfather of this thing that we do, mm -hmm. that you and I both do. Right. He's the guy that started it. He really is the guy who, who started talking about shit instead of just telling jokes. He started, like, talking about social problems and right. why is this and relationships and, and sadness and all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, he, he developed a whole different kind of style of stand-up comedy. But it's not funny. Because right. you're looking at something that happened in 1950, in 1960. It's just, it's so hard for it to translate. Yeah. So comedy, unlike anything else, loses its vow or its power over time. Like if you can listen to like some, even like Red Fox or something like really great old stand up, it's just not that good. I don't, I don't know though. I, I do think there are some jokes that stand up. Sure, sure. I, I think there's some people that do it that like even, you know, 50 years from now people will look back and be like that joke's still funny oh yeah well he had some of those Lenny Bruce had one joke that many comics have accidentally told since then because mm -hmm. they didn't know any better um, but it was about uh, gay people that being gay is against the law it's like gay it's uh, against the law dig so they put you in jail with a bunch of guys who want to have sex with you right <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was great. Yeah. I mean, back then it murdered. I mean, back yeah. then it was just a fucking nuclear bomb. They're like, oh shit, that's I so true. I can't imagine being in the audience and hearing someone talk like that for the first time. Oh, yeah. Like, because like the best comedy, I think, is things you, you didn't, like, as soon as someone says it, you're like, I have always thought that. Yes. You know, they're just like vocalizing something you were never able to kind of put together. Yes. And that had to be that. Yeah. In that audience. Then being like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, people were so suppressed then. I mean, that's the other thing about Lenny Bruce. He went to jail right. multiple times. I mean, he was arrested multiple times for telling jokes. Yeah. Just like, just kept doing it. Didn't give up. Didn't say, well, this is obviously not smart. Right. He kept doing it. He kept pushing the envelope. George Carlin, same thing. He went to jail for it too. That's real stand-ups though. You know, yeah. like, you know, real stand-ups, the ones that are just like, no, I have to do this. Yeah. Like, you don't do it for, like, a week, and pe and you're just, like, crawling out of your skin. Also, the audience is ultimately supposed to be the judge of whether or not something's good. And if that's not the case, then we're losing personal freedom. We're not asking someone to, like, you know, you know like, someone's not going on stage and saying, you know, I'm going to uh, advocate that you murder someone. Here's their address. We're all going to do it together. Let's meet up. Let's, we're not talking about that. Right. We're talking about someone cracking a joke and the audience laughs and they enjoy it. And today, even today, when, like, when people get upset about someone's stand-up set and they try to cancel something and try, 
listen to the audience. Right. Was the, was the audience laughing? Well, they know it's a joke, right? They're at a comedy show, so they know it's a joke, and they were laughing. Why do you have a problem with it? You're right. not even there. So you have a pro- you're just looking for problems? Look at women in Saudi Arabia. Right. You want to look at real problems? <laughs> look at real problems. Why don't you yeah. speak out against that, you fucking cowards? Yeah, again, it's hard. Yeah. It's easy. Like I, I hate any time... Like, I, I, I'm in favor of a comic telling whatever joke they want. And then, like, the only way you're going to know it's funny is if you say it out loud to an audience. Yes. And it might not be funny the first thousand times you say it right. until you figure it out. Well, that was my giant issue with comics that were going after Louie after that set was leaked. The only thing people should have been mad about that is that the set was leaked. Yeah. That should yeah. be that should have been like, you don't know where he's going to end up with that. No. He's known for doing huge premises that you disagree with and then he convinces you why he's yes. right and, in a very funny way. And tongue in cheek. Yeah. Too. I mean, it's not like he really thinks that someone pushed a fat kid in front of a bullet and that's why they're talking in front of CNN. He's he'll figure out a way to make that work. This is his first time doing stand up in 10 months. Yeah. Like let let's see where the joke goes. But you know that and I know that because yeah. that's what we do. But there's a lot of people that don't even understand the mechanics of creating a joke that Right. Like a lot of times you'll go up and you'll have a premise and you're like, God, I fucking know there's something. And he might eat shit with that joke for a couple of months before it really starts really starts catching years maybe even yeah. you know like there's i there's always jokes i've had that like now i'm coming back to because i was like i wasn't ready to tell it then and now yes. i'm getting back to it and i'm like okay maybe this direction yes yes but, like it's especially the harder the premise the, like it's gonna take a while people have no idea how hard it is to write jokes well that's ari's entire new hour that mm-hmm. he's doing you know his whole new hour is is called jew mm-hmm. and it's all you know he grew up orthodox jewish like in you know he had to go to israel and take religious classes all day studying the talmud fucking 10 12 hours a day Mm -hmm. like he was doing the whole deal and his whole hour now is about this and we had talked about him doing bits about that years and years ago but he's like i wasn't ready because i my stand-up wasn't good enough yet i didn't understand how to craft a joke yet yeah and it, I mean, it takes a while to get there and especially stuff that's personal like that to you. And like, you want to do it justice. You only get to tell that story once on stage. Right. And right. then once you do those jokes, hopefully they were good enough because you're really not going to get to revisit them. Yeah. For you to go back over your like, hey, I put an album out 10 years ago and it kind of sucks. So I'm going to redo all those bits. Yeah. Please don't go back and listen to the roots <laughs> yeah. until after you see the second version. 